Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We give the Lord all the praise. We thank God this morning. Welcome everyone to the throne room of grace. We want to welcome you this morning. Those of you online watching this morning. The Lord bless you for being there. And the Lord bless you for being here. Amen. This morning we're going to start our service with prayer. And after that we'll enter into a time of worship. And then we'll bring the word of God to you. Amen. I want you to begin to bless the Lord this morning. Just thank him and appreciate him for his faithfulness, for his loving kindness. The Lord has been good to you. Throughout the week, the Lord has been faithful to you and your loved ones. I want you to lift your voice wherever you are and begin to celebrate his goodness. Begin to appreciate him this morning. Love him from the bottom of your heart. Let him know how much he means to you. Come on, let him know how much he means to you. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We give you all the praise. Thank you for being our God. We honor you this morning. We praise your holy name. There is none like you, O oh God. None can be compared unto you. Abba Father, we lift your name this morning. We lift your name on high. We exalt your mighty name, O oh God. We praise your 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 name, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Maros Pianda Baha. Keto Parande Bazayanda. Kios. Shapaya de Kozea, Alion de Baroshi and Aba. Come on, give him praise, 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 give him praise. We exalt your name, mighty God. We lift your name on high, Jesus. Rokan Dorobo Shayaba, Ilio Payan de Kendua, Rose of Shalom, Lily of the Valley. We bless your name, O God. We honor you this morning, O God. Le Payan. No zika bayanda ba le korianda bazentea. Still in the mood of prayer this morning. You have every cause and every reason to celebrate the goodness of the Lord wherever you are, beloved. Just adore the name of the Lord this morning. He's worthy. He's worthy in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we bless your name this morning, mighty God. We thank you even for giving us yet another opportunity, even to gather in your presence. Lord, we celebrate your goodness even upon our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This morning, I'd like to encourage you with scripture. You're thanking him for his grace and for his mercies towards you. Or oh, just begin to adore his name wherever you are. One more time. Uh, give him the praise. Give him the praise. Uh, that is due his name. Uh, he's worthy. He's worthy of all adoration. He's worthy of all honor. Uh, Father, this morning, uh, we bless your name. Uh, and we are thanking you uh, for even for our loved ones, my God. Uh, we are worshiping you uh, for bringing us thus far. Uh, Father, from the depth of our hearts, uh, is nothing 
name but adoration uh, unto your holy name uh, for indeed you deserve it uh, oh Jehovah is your name my God uh, Lord we are thanking you uh, for how far you have brought us uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, we are glorifying your name uh, even for the gift of life uh, and Lord even for showing yourself stronger uh, on our behalf uh, we rejoice in your presence this morning uh, and we are thanking you you are magnifying the name of the Lord uh, and you are thanking him uh, for his renewed mercies uh, toward you and your loved ones uh, the Bible makes us to understand uh, that his mercies uh, towards us uh, are renewed each morning uh, he is a faithful God uh, uh, faithful is he who has brought us thus far oh just adore his name this morning you are magnifying his name uh, uh, the glory belongs to our Lord and our King uh, and we are celebrating him even for his goodness uh, you are praising the Lord uh, for he has heard your cry I don't know what your cry has been uh, this year uh, whatever it is that the Lord has done for you uh, this is the opportune time uh, to give him the praise uh, and to magnify his name uh, indeed he is a good God uh, indeed he is a faithful God uh, uh, faithful is he who has brought us thus far uh, mighty God uh, this morning we appropriate the praise uh, uh, to your holy name we celebrate you for your goodness hallelujah in Psalm 63, the verse 1, the psalmist declares, and it says, Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in a parched and weary land where there is no water. You and I can attest to the chaos that we are in this season, these times. We wake up to all sorts of news. But you want to join with the psalmist this morning. And earnestly seek the Lord. You want to passionately, with some fervency, ask the Lord even to fill you with his spirit with his spirit it takes his spirit and makes the difference in our lives it takes the holy spirit even to make a difference in our lives this morning you're opening your mouth and you're praying for fresh empowerment you're asking the holy spirit to fill you anew you're praying that the spirit of god will give you the strength that you require the strength that you need in these times in the mighty name of jesus as the lord to fill you with his spirit uh, even for that fervency and for that passion uh, for him uh, in these times uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, Father this morning uh, as we stand in your presence my God uh, we pray for fresh unction my Lord uh, we ask for fresh empowerment uh, and Lord uh, you said you will, pray, you will send us your spirit uh, and that your spirit to oh God uh, will help us in our moments uh, and that's what that's our cry this morning uh, father oh uh, fill us anew in the mighty name of Jesus uh, as we stand in your presence this morning uh, we pray the Lord uh, oh, your spirit will fill us uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, uh, many are the needs of your people here th this morning uh, but Lord we know uh, the way your spirit is my God uh, uh, there is a liberty and uh, Lord as we stand here we pray for fresh empowerment uh, uh, mighty God uh, anything uh, any burden any spirit of heaviness and Lord we know uh, that your spirit of God uh, almighty God uh, as you are here in our presence uh, your spirit will lift any such heaviness uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, oh my God uh, as we cry on you oh God we pray the Lord uh, you will show yourself stronger even on our behalf uh, in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus in in the mighty name of Jesus. The same way that the psalmist cried out in Psalm 28. We are in the fifth month. We have a few weeks even to humble ourselves before the Lord. I don't know what your desires, but this morning you're praying into our upcoming prayer and fasting. You're asking the Lord to strengthen you and to be your shield. When the psalmist penned this psalm, it was a trying time for him. Wicked men had arisen against him. 
And what are, or who are wicked men? You and I know what wicked orchestrations are. It can be in your workplace. Uh, it can be in your union, in your marriage, uh, in raising your kids. Uh, this morning, you're asking the Lord to be that strength and the shield and the shield against those the fiery darts uh, of the enemy. Uh, just lift your voice uh, and lift your voice. Uh, if you are like the psalmist uh, and you have nowhere else to turn to and it is your strength, uh, you want to open your mouth uh, and you want to call on his name in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus father this morning we are calling on you as the psalmist of God lifted up his eyes toward you and you sold yourself stronger and you are his strength and his shield my God this morning we pray the Lord you will be our strength and our shield in these times against any fiery darts of the enemy that may be coming against against us and Lord in our jobs mighty God even as we seek your face even as we serve you God whatsoever the enemy brings up against us and Lord we pray that you will be that shield and you be a shield against every machination and works of the enemy against our lives in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Father we ask this to your son in Jesus mighty name in Jesus' mighty name. We want to lift up prayer, even for our beloved nation. And we are also praying uh, for our, uh, the nations. Uh, we are asking God to save and shepherd his people and care for his heritage. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, oh, David was a shepherd boy. Uh, but he called uh, and he acknowledged that God uh, is his shepherd. Uh, is he your shepherd? Uh, he can shepherd our nations. Uh, he can shepherd our land. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, you are lifting your voice. Uh, God says the children are his heritage. Uh, we are his heritage. Uh, we are asking him to we are asking him to save us. Uh, we are asking him to shepherd us unto him uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, in times and in places that we have gone astray uh, this morning uh, we are praying that he will shepherd us uh, even back unto him uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, uh, Father we are praying for our nation. Uh, we are lifting our nation before you. Uh, my God, we pray for our leaders of oh God, even in time that they've gone astray and be been carried away by their selfish desires. This morning we pray the Lord, you have been our great shepherd, oh God. You will align us. You will bring us back. You will steer us back unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we are praying for all the other continents and the other nations. Lord, where there is turmoil, we pray the mighty God you turn situations around for your great name's sake in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. At this time, you are praying for our preacher today. You are asking God to anoint him anew. You are asking God to fill him with his spirit. You are praying and asking him uh, to give him uh, utterance, uh, even to preach his word uh, with boldness uh, and with clarity in the mighty name of Jesus. And above all, that God will give us ears uh, even to hear from him uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, you want to celebrate the Lord this morning. You want to give him the praise that is due his name in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Water turn into one. He opened the eyes of the blind. There's no one like
happy to be in the house of God today? Are you happy to be in His presence? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise.
holy, holy, holy Lord, you mighty on your
worship the Lord. Give him praise. Give him honor. He is Jehovah. He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the everlasting one. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Come on, lift your voice and worship the name of the Lord. Father, we worship you, Lord. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, Lord. There is none like you, Lord. There is none like you, Lord. There is none like you, my is our year of divine assets and we're excited to have you worship with us this morning your presence here today is an asset for us in this church we're determined to win souls for the lord our mission is to reach out to the lost world and help the unsaved to reconcile to god connecting man to his source god is the vision for this ministry we acknowledge the presence of all first-time visitors Kindly stand if you're visiting for the first time in person. We are honored to have you here. Please fill out the forms in the welcome packet and a member of our welcome team will meet with you on the right-hand side of the sanctuary after church. And if you're virtual, our newcomers link is located on our website or in the group chat on our YouTube page. Service meeting time. Worship service is every Sunday from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. in person and virtual on YouTube and Facebook. Grace Kids service is every Sunday from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. in person only. Wednesday Bible Studies is from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Zoom. And the Zoom meeting ID number is 531-461-5280. Five four zero two four one. Grace Hour is every Friday from seven thirty p.m. to nine p.m. in person and virtual on YouTube. Prayer Line is every Sunday from nine thirty p.m. to ten p.m. Our conference call number is six zero seven three seven four one 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 four. Access code seven two six five six three. Early Morning Grace is Monday to Friday from 5.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. Youth Meeting is every other Saturday at 10 a.m. on Zoom. Show Me Your Glory Once More is the theme for our 30-day prayer and fasting, which starts from May 28th to June 26th. Sunday, May 29th is with the host, Rev. Daniel Ozu. Sunday, June 5th is with Rev. Eddie Cranting. Sunday, June 12th is with Pastor Charles Brooks. Sunday, June 19th is with Reverend Francis Dodu. And our three-day prophetic conference with Prophet Seth Amwabwating is from Friday, June 24th to Sunday, June 26th. 
Friday, June 24th and Saturday, June 25th, service will be at 7.30 p.m. And Sunday, June 26th, service will be at 10 a.m. Please make it a point to partake in this spiritual emphasis journey and you will be blessed. Thank you very much and we hope you enjoy the rest of the service. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet and let's celebrate Jesus this morning. If he is the reason why you are here today, Sunday morning, come on, celebrate him. Oh, 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 celebrate Jesus. I didn't say celebrate me. I said celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Shout unto him. Hallelujah. Amen. Wave to someone before you take your seat. The Lord bless you. You may please take your seat in the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. God is good. I am excited this morning. Hallelujah. Because I've been chasing this man for a very long time. And finally, I find out that he's in town. I said, this time, the lighthouse people, they're going to lose. I'm going to cross him before he head down here. Amen. So today we have in our midst at Bishop. I could see I'm powerful. He is a big man of God for us to have him in this four square. I'm telling you, this is the Archbishop for Lighthouse Churches. He was in the state for a mission. And I said, this time around, we're going to get you. The moment he got here, the lighthouse people just put their invitation in quick and then we miss it. But today he is here. Amen. Um, he's here with his lovely wife, Lady Pastor, Dr. Evelyn Ampofo. Amen. Let's celebrate the woman of God. Come on, celebrate her. Dr. Evelyn has been here before and um, she's here today. And guess what? Dr. Evelyn is Georgette auntie. Amen. And at Bishop is uh, Mrs. Abby, elder brother. Amen. So today we have the family in the house. And we have Aunt Vera and Mr. Lamore here. Come on, let's celebrate them from all the way, Maryland. Amen. We thank God. Church, I want you to open your heart this morning and receive the word that this man of God is going to bring to you. And I believe that your life will never be the same. We're going to see the um, intro on the screen and after that, he will mount the stage and give us the word. Amen. Amen. Ministering to us today is a seasoned and anointed servant of the Lord. Archbishop Kwesi Ampofu is the Archbishop of the Lighthouse Group of Churches, a Pentecostal Christian church founded in 1987 by Bishop Dag Heward Mills and headquartered in Accra, Ghana. It is one of the leading international Christian churches and has over 6,075 branches in many countries in Africa, Europe, Asia, the Caribbean, Australia, the Middle East, and the Americas. Archbishop Kwesi Ampofu is an architect by training and a member of the Ghana Institute of Architecture. He entered the full-time ministry in 2000 and was ordained a Reverend Minister in 2003. He was consecrated as a bishop in April 2012. Over the years, he has been involved in various activities which include architectural construction, pastoring of churches, and overseeing sections of the church. He was installed as the first Archbishop of the Lighthouse Group of Churches in October 2019. He's married to Lady Pastor Dr. Mrs. Evelyn Ampofu 
and blessed were the son Michael and the daughter Rachel. Church, let's welcome Archbishop Kwesi Ampofo. Give the Lord one more cup offering. Shall we just close our eyes for a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come once again into your presence. I pray that you would transform our lives and um, you would speak to us. I pray that your blessings shall fall upon the congregation, the church. Father, we lift this church up, the pastor, the founder, and the leaders. Father, I pray that what has taken light us to where it is shall visit them and also be a blessing to them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. You may clap your hands and take your seats. Amen. Well, I am very honored to be here, and um, I've heard so much about your church, your pastor from my sister, and um, today, finally, I am actually standing in the pulpit. I've kept promising your pastor that um, I'm going to visit when I can, and... um, Today, I am here. I had to turn off all my antennas and radars and phones. I'm sure they've been trying to call, but well, as soon as we finish the service, I'll turn it on. I said, oh, wow, okay, I would have come. I just finished preaching somewhere. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, I am very, very happy and excited to be here um, with you. I am like... Your pastor said I came with my wife, Lady Reverend Evelyn Ampofo. I think she should say hello to the church. You know, I see when men of God are introduced and their wife said they make them say something. So I think I should also make it. What do you think? So Lady Reverend, say hello to the church. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. It's a blessing to be here. The Bible says that Blessed is the man that God chooses and causes it to come to him. So I believe that our presence here this morning is not by accident. God has purpose that we should be here today and to hear his word. And I know that we'll all be blessed. God bless you. I'm happy to be here with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, today I have a very straightforward simple message from the lord you know and before i do that i would like to share some prayer points that we used to pray about many years ago as a church lighthouse um we used to meet in out of the city in a special place to pray and um there was one particular prayer that we prayed I thought I'll share those prayer points with you because those points have manifested and um, become a reality in the life of the church. And for every church, I think it's a good um, prayer to pray. So this is not my message, but this is just um, some prayer points. Hallelujah. And many years ago, Bishop Doug led us to pray um, on significance. Amen. Amen. And he felt that God would want his church and his ministry, his life, and all the ministers who are in the church to have a significant um, life and for the church to have a significant impact on Ghana and the world. Amen. 
I believe that everybody here, um, as a member of the church, would have a desire to see the church grow and become a mega church, a mighty church. Hallelujah. Already I feel your place is too small. Because if everybody came to church today, we will not fit here. Is that not the case? Do you know one or two people who didn't come to church? Yeah. yeah. So if all of them came, you can see that we will not fit here. So uh, very soon, Pastor, we're going to have a problem of looking for another place. Yeah. It's a good problem to have. Hallelujah. Yeah. Any businessman, if you have a problem of your shop is now too small, you need to expand it. I think it's a good problem to have. Instead of shrinking, you will expand in Jesus' name. And your own life, as the church expands, you would also expand. I don't think we like shrinking things, you know. If you woke up in the morning, one of your arms has shrunk. It's now half the size. It is like one of it, not both of it. Because if you had shrunk by maybe 30%, you'd be happy. Most of us here, we are aiming at shrinking by some percentage. <laughs> In the morning, if you see me mixing my concoctions, tea, then there's lemon, then there's vinegar, then there's that, then there's that, all in an aim of shrinking. You know, so apart from our dress sizes, if our other things shrink, we will not be happy. If your bank account was shrinking, and it is, you see, but God can help your bank account. Hallelujah. I pray that your bank account will not shrink further. It will expand in the name of Jesus. That your earning power, your income will not shrink, but expand in the name of Jesus. I'm serious about what I'm saying. You know, in church, it's a spiritual place, and we say things. The things we, we believe and we want, we say them. And then you receive it by saying amen, amen. and it's enforced in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So many years ago, we prayed a prayer called significance. Number one, to be significant means to be large enough or important enough to have an effect. To be large enough or important enough to have an effect. Amen. Amen. So when we say, may the church be significant, what we are saying is that the throne room of grace ministries would be large enough yeah. or important enough yeah. to have an effect. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It is a good destiny for the church. Yeah. And it's not only the pastor who must have that burden. It is all of us who must have that vision and have that burden. Hallelujah. Yeah. So that we can run the race with pastor. You see, if, if pastor alone has that vision that the church should be large enough or important enough so as to have an effect, what that means is that if the church is empty, you don't care, and it's only pastor who cares. It's only pastor who may wake up at dawn and start sending text messages and calling, praying, you know, and believing that you would attend church today. In fact, there are a few of us here who nearly didn't come. You almost didn't come. I mean, you almost, almost didn't come. Even me as a pastor, there are days when I wake up and I'm lying in bed. Then I would jump. I said, it's Sunday. <laughs> I've got to go. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's not only you, it happens to the pastors too. But then we always end up in church. And you must always come to church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today is the last day you didn't come to church. Amen. If you are here, amen. amen. So maybe last week or last two weeks, if you didn't come, it's the last time you ever didn't come to church. 
From today, we are in church all the time. Why? Because we want the church to be large enough and important enough to have an effect. So it was a prayer that we prayed. And by the grace of God, we can say that the church has become large enough and important enough. Yeah. We never aimed at it, but we have the president visiting us, the vice president visiting us, various dignitaries come every now and then to have a discussion with, with Bishop. In fact, in his early days, I remember he would be saying that God did not call him to take pictures with Pontius Pilate. <laughs> it was never a vision he had to be close to politicians and all that. But today, all of them want his recognition and the church. And the church has become large enough and important enough and is having an effect. That shall be your story. You, you see, when you see a ministry like maybe Joel Osteen's ministry or you see a ministry like T.D. Jake's ministries or you see a ministry like Lighthouse Chapel, you may never think that they were in a small group before. Yes. I remember I was listening to T.G. Jakes once. He was talking about how a uh, woman died loose started. And he said it was a Bible study. It was a Bible study and there were less than 12 people there. And that's how it, it started. And today it's become something else. I think even the name has changed. It's moved on from, um, what, what is it? Is it woman that was loose to... Now it's like a group of activities happening at the same time, you know. So everything starts small. So what we are seeing today, it didn't even start like this. I'm sure it was far smaller. And so it's growing. And, and, and where it's going to get to is very great. Amen. Very great. Amen. I said very great. Amen. In Isaiah 54, the Bible says from verse 1, Sing, O barren, that thou didst not bear, break forth into singing, cry aloud, that thou didst not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, say of the Lord. Verse 2, enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains, of thy habitation. Spare not. Lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy sticks. The Bible is saying enlarge the place of your habitation. Um, do you have the amplified version? Can you project the amplified version? Who is the controller of the projection? Yes. Give us the amplified version of this scripture. You have it? I think I'll need a reader to help me to read. So somebody can have a mic. I think the lady in the polka dot should become the reader for the day. I don't know who you are, but so read the amplified version of Isaiah 54 verse 2. Are you in the church? Yes. yes. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Quickly. My time is expiring. Isaiah 54, verse 2. Yes. Okay. Enlarge the place of your tent. And So this is amplified version. Go ahead. Enlarge the place of your tent. Enlarge the place of your tent. And let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. And let the curtains of your habitation be stretched out. Now when he says enlarge the place of of your tent. Do you understand what it means? It means that maybe your tent is, let's say, um, I don't know the, the type of measurements you're used to here. Let's say 10 meters. Are you meters or you are feet? feet. So maybe your, your tent is 100 feet by 100 feet. Do you have an idea what is 100 feet? This room is about 55 feet by 
55 by 40. So let's say this church is 50 by 50 feet. Do you understand? So when, when we say enlarge the place of your habitation, it means that get a bulldozer and grade the space around your habitation because you are about to move the wall from 50 to 100. Say amen, somebody. Amen. We are about to move the wall from 50 to 200. Amen. It's important that, that, that I say these things to you because in your heart, you have to have a large church. Amen. In your heart. Amen. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. The church has to grow in your heart. You must be dissatisfied with a small church. The same church it was last year and the same church it is this year. You must be dissatisfied. And you understand why as I preach. You see, so I'm just trying to share my prayer point of view. It's becoming a sermon. So the first point is that Lord, make us large enough and important enough to have an effect. That's the prayer point. Lord, make us large enough. You see, so if in your heart, secretly, you just want a little tea party, on your heart, you are satisfied with just, um, the choir didn't sing. Would they sing after I preach? <laughs> I'm asking them to sing. <laughs> you see, now, if the choir is, um, I went to a church once, the choir was made up of um, one, two, three, four, five, six people. So the keyboardist was the leader of the choir. And then there were two sisters. One was called Pepsi, one was called Fanta. <laughs> and then there were three other sisters. Now, there's, there's the two sisters, Pepsi, and Fanta were Jamaicans. Then the other three were Ghanaians. And then the leader was also a Ghanaian. But the, the choir was broken into three groups, like Republican, Democrats. I don't know what the third group is in America. <laughs> you know. And the two groups were against the keyboardist who was the leader. And then these three ladies don't like these two ladies. And these two ladies don't like everybody. You see, so it's it's a small group, but there was there was there were factions in it. But maybe if there were twenty, well, it can be more. But it's better to have a twenty-member choir than a six-man choir. Sometimes you may say, oh, if we are smaller, it's better. No, I've seen a small choir, six broken into three, two, one, and three. Wow. The, the keyboardist was like Trump. Very boisterous and very strong. Mercy. <laughs> I shouldn't say those things here. <laughs> see, so, but a hundred man choir is far more magnificent than a 13 man choir. Hallelujah. So the church is growing and it's going to become large Amen. and it's going to become significant. Amen. I know what you have here. Do you have mayors or you have what? The what? So like this area, who would, who's closest to you in terms of the area? So the supervisor then above him is who? The above him is who? Governor. The governor will be aware of you. Yes. You, you see, but maybe you think, oh, so, I mean, if he's not aware of us, so what? You see, so you, in your heart, you don't think that the church should become large and important. But it's important that the church becomes large and influential. In the society in which you are. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I'm here to say that you have a big vision in your heart. Amen. You see, if you don't have a vision of um, maybe driving a certain car, you will never drive that car. You will never 
move yourself to the level of buying that car. You know, I mean, if you had to um, repair a Mercedes Benz before, you would always think about just being in your um, Toyota. And even with the Toyota, we have the Sequoia, we have the Tundra, we have um, Highlander, you know, then we have the Starlet. So maybe you, so let me just keep my Toyota Starlet. <laughs> because I don't think, I, had, I don't have a vision of spending much money on maintaining a car. Do you understand? But if you have a certain type of car, you should also be able to do a certain type of maintenance to maintain and to keep the car. If you have a certain type of house, you would have a certain type of vision or plan in your head to maintain the house, to heat the house, to whatever you have to do to the house. It requires a certain um, commitment. So if you don't have that commitment, like, I just want to have one room. I don't want the things associated with a house. Um, what are the things associated with a house? Rent, ground, rent, what, property rates? What, what do you have here? Sorry? Yeah, I mean, you can say, okay, I'm just going to Airbnb every month. I do a new one. <laughs> I don't have any issues, you know. So if, if you don't have a certain vision, and I'm trying to say to you that, have the vision of an enlarged church. It is, not, it is not just the duty of the pastor. It is the duty of the congregation also to have a, a vision for a large church. Because if you had that vision, you would say to yourself that, you know, even the animals entered Noah's are two by two. Even animals were going two by two. You, you are coming one by one. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> I said the animals, the squirrels were coming two by two. You know, the, um, what are, the antelopes were coming two by two. God gave them an instruction. They followed it. We human beings, homo sapiens, <laughs> we come to church, one, sometimes even half by half. <laughs> you are here, but your mind is not here. You are here, but your mind is not here. Can, can you imagine that somebody is sitting here, but his mind is not here? Yeah. Somebody may be here, but he's also on Instagram. So he's 30% in the church, 70% on Instagram. In fact, 30% on Instagram, 30% on Facebook, 10% on something else. What's up? <laughs> So you are not fully here. He said, God said they should come into the house two by two. You are coming one by one. Yeah. If we decide to come to church two by two, we, will, we, will, we cannot be in this place. Every Sunday, you're looking for somebody to bring to church. You see, but so far, because you, you maybe you don't have a certain vision, it's like, let this church grow. You don't have that vision. You don't care if you come alone. In fact, you've never even thought about it before. Yeah. When you think about it, so I don't want to disturb somebody. I don't know his plans. Maybe he wants to do his laundry. Maybe he wants to do his shopping. Maybe he wants to whatever he wants to do. So I can't force him to come. But the Bible says in Luke chapter 14 that a certain man had a feast. And he invited many people to come. We didn't finish our scripture, did we? I jumped to where? The man and the feast. The man and the feast, yeah. <laughs> so I'm in various places oh, now. It's beautiful. You preach it. But listen to me. He invited many yeah. to come. And the Bible says that they didn't come. He printed special invitation cards. He said, those he invited to come didn't come. So then he said to the servant, go out into the highways, into the byways, and go and compel them to come. Compel the poor, 
the blind, the maimed, and the halt. And get them to come to church. You see, if our church will be filled, it will usually not be filled by people in our range. If you understand what I mean. It will be filled by people who may be out of our range. Yeah, you may not get much bankers to be here. You may not get much doctors. You may not get much, you know. But Jesus said that if you want the house to be full, go for the blind, go for the maimed, go for the halt, go for the homeless. Yeah. And you fill the church. It means you must do outreach. You must go to the areas, go to the malls, go to the places. Yeah. And reach out and then invite people. And he says, he used the word, compel them to come. The Greek word for compel is the word anakazo. It means to force. It means to necessitate. It means to, you know, you know when a policeman arrests you and he's handcuffed you and put you on the ground. You don't do it willingly. He compels you. Is that not the case? You are compelled to. So they also taught how to compel you to do what you, ha you have to do, what they are instructing you to do. Because you will naturally not do. You see, we will naturally not come to church. People have to be compelled. Yes. You know, one of the meanings of the word anakazo is the word to threaten For example, I just came from Houston. We buried a 31-year-old guy. Medical doctor. 31 years. If we're, if we're making a list of people who, who may die, we will not have him on the list. In fact, after every funeral, if we're doing a list of who's the next... all of us who attended the funeral will not be on the list. But every time we come for the next funeral and the one who's lying there <laughs> was in the room. Somebody you know. You understand? But you see that if you do not, we do not use a certain force to get a certain group of people to come to church to meet Jesus. And to get their eternity sorted out before they get there, then it's going to be a problem. You see? So the, the man said he did a feast, that's a service, but people didn't come. So he said, go and compel them to come. Church, to fill the church means that we have to compel people to come to church. You have to pester people to come to church nicely. Hello, you start calling on Monday. <laughs> Hello, how is it? Wow, Tuesday. Hello, how's your afternoon? Lunch. Wednesday. Give the person a call, you know, and keep dropping hints of Sunday coming. And on, sun, on Saturday, you tell the person, you know, tomorrow I'll pass by and even pick you up and bring you to church. So you see that gradually the church will begin to be full. Because now you are not just telling people to lie down and put the cuffs on their hands by themselves. <laughs> you are ensuring it. You are bringing them to church. Amen. Amen. So we are talking about the journey of becoming large enough and important enough. And that led us to Isaiah chapter 54. We're reading verse 2. So he said what? Quickly, quickly. Sit now. Just read it quickly. Okay. Um, enlarge the side of your tent. Yes. Stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Do not spare them. Do not spare. Lengthen your tent ropes. Lengthen your tent ropes. And make your pegs firm make in the ground. Make your pegs firm in the ground. Amen. You see? So we are preparing for, you know, pastor says, I see you come to do a 30-day fast. It's all part of 
preparing yourself for a certain growth and a certain expansion. Number two, so the first prayer point is what? Lord, make us large enough and important enough to have an effect. Number two, significance means to be large enough or important enough to be noticed. To be large enough or important enough to be noticed. Who's the timekeeper? You are the timekeeper. Okay. When I cross 30 minutes, shout amen. <laughs> so the second meaning is to be large enough, important enough to, to be noticed. This church will be noticed. You see, and not just that, but even your own life as an individual, may you be important enough to be noticed. Some people are not noticed in their homes. There are only three in the house. And you are not Some people are not noticed in their families. When there's an important family meeting, they are not called. <laughs> you must be noticed in your office. You are not noticed. You are not missed. You are not noticed. You are virtually of no consequence. Whether you come or whether you don't. You know, sometimes even when you don't, it's like, Hooray. <laughs> you know, but as a person, you must be um, important enough to be noticed in life. That's why you have to, you know, educate yourself. You have to build your life up. You have to live a certain kind of life that makes you an important person where you are. Amen. You can't just live any kind of life to be noticed. You see. And there are two ways of being noticed. There's a bad way of being noticed. There's a good way of being noticed. So we're talking of a good way of being noticed. Amen. You know, you can decide to rob all the houses in your area. You'll be noticed. <laughs> but in a bad way. <laughs> Number three, to be large enough or important enough to have a special meaning. The throne of, the throne room of grace shall be large enough or important enough to have a special meaning. And I'm, 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 I'm saying practical things. Yes. I mean, today we just see T, D, even without the jigs. Our mind will say jigs. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? When we see Potter's house, we know what we mean. When we see Lake, is it Lake Lakewood? Yeah. And so many other ministries. When we hear Derek Prince, we hear Kenneth Hagen ministry. We hear Lighthouse Chapel International. You see. So the churches, the ministries ha are having as an important meaning in Christendom. Hallelujah. And this church will also have a special meaning Amen. in Christendom. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Number four, to be large enough or important enough to have an effect on the future. This church will be large enough and important enough so as to have an effect on the future. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, and remember, it's, it's this way that we, the church and you. Yeah. In your life, maybe in your community, or at least in your family, you should have an effect on the future. You should have a special meaning in your family. Yes. You know, you shouldn't be a black sheep. You should be a, a solution bringer. <laughs> you know, is it when you watch series like maybe, um, maybe Greenleaf? I don't know if you watch Greenleaf, but. When a family gathers, they can see oh, this one is that, 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 you know. Like that with all the series. You see. So we are saying this church would have a, would have a special meaning and an effect on the future. 
it means that you have an effect on the young people. Because the future is the youth. Future is the young people. So if the young people grow up in 10 years' time, they know the Lord, their lives are straight because they met you. Because they were in this church. They were in this congregation. Sometimes it's not a pastor. Sometimes you are an inspirer in the church. Your life inspires others. So you see that because of you, a lot of people, so young people, we want to be like this auntie. We want to be like this uncle. Yeah. And then the, you, know, you, you have opportunities to talk to them, to advise them, to counsel them. And they grow up and they become important people in society because they met you. May it be that when a young person meets you, they walk away blessed. Amen. They walk away safe. Amen. Tell the nearest person, by you, may it be that when a young person meets you, they would walk away safe. Amen. When you meet some people, you don't walk away safe. You walk away contaminated. You walk away injured. You walk away destroyed. You walk away what? Disturbed. You walk away broken. Upset. Belittle. Yeah. You know. So I don't know what effect you are having on young people, but then we are looking at the church. May the church have a good impact on the future on young people. Number five. To be large enough or important enough to affect many people. Many people. Our target is many people. Many people. Many people. Number six, to be large enough or important enough to ha leave a mark in history. Yeah. Are, are, you, are you thinking about that? Maybe you are not. So today I'm bringing it to your mind that this church must leave a mark in history. John Wesley has left a mark in history. Everybody knows John Wesley. Ask the person, do you know John Wesley? John Wesley. Do you know John Wesley? Yeah. Who is he? Yeah. Your answer is suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting you on notice. <laughs> So answer it again. Do you know John Wesley? Yeah. Who is he? So you see, as, as we begin to probe, you know, John Wesley is the founder of the Methodist Church. That's, that's, that's the major answer for John Wesley. If I ask you, do you know Martin Luther? His is the 99 theses that he pasted on the church. That's the main thing about him. You see, do you know Einstein? Theory of relativity. That's the main thing about him. You see. So this church must also have make a mark in history. Amen. Even the law enforcement in this area must comment one day and say that it seems as if the pastor here and his congregation are really having a good effect on the young people in the area. I mean, we, we hear it many times. There are so many testimonies of ministers and churches in communities and how they've impacted their communities. Is that not the case? Yes. Yeah. So this church too would, would, would leave a mark in history. Amen. Yes. So it's not, we are not, we are not, it's not a game. It's a real thing we are doing. Yeah. So we're going to leave a good mark in history. Not a not a a bad one, a good one. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Number seven, to be large enough or important enough to be pleasing to God. Amen. To be pleasing to God. To be pleasing to God. You know, read Luke chapter 14, 
verse 16. Luke 14, 16. I, I want to explain this point, number seven. Forty sixty. are you there? Yes. Begin. But I'm reading the amplified version. No, okay. King James. King James, okay. No, you always start reading the Bible from King James. Okay. And then you go to the others for further explanation. Luke 14, verse 16. Yes. And th then said he unto him, Yes. A certain man made a great supper yes. and bade many. And sent his and bade many, uh -huh. and sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, mm -hmm. "Come, come, for all things are now ready." Yes. And they, they all with one consent began to make excuse. Yes. The first said unto him, "I have bought a piece of ground, and mm -hmm. I must need, to I must needs go and see it. Yes. I pray thee, have me excused." Yeah. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, mm -hmm. and I go to prove them. Mm -hmm. I pray thee, have me excused. Mm -hmm. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. Simple. So, listen, notice, notice, all the excuses were legitimate. Mm -hmm. But you must still come. So, I'm telling you today, your excuse for next week for not coming to church. It's a legitimate one. But still you must come. Your excuse for next two weeks. So I'm, we are pre, you know. Your excuse for next month. Now some of you have a plan, maybe next month, you, three weeks, you just come one. So your excuses, you know, I don't know what your excuse would be. What could the excuse be? Work, okay, my shift changed and all that. Hey, Charlie. <laughs> Look, if you want to make a way to come to church, you will. Shift or no shift. If you feel that it's important for you to come to church, you would come. Shift or no shift. Everybody say shift or no shift. Yeah. Don't you make arrangements sometimes? Don't you even sell your shift, you know? You trade. So if you think church is important enough, shift or no shift, you'll be here. But I'm just throwing a challenge to you. <laughs> Go on reading. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Mm -hmm. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant. Mm -hmm. He was angry. Why was he angry? Because the, the house was not yet full. Mm. The people hadn't come. I'm talking about point seven. To be large enough or important, important enough so that we please God. And what pleases God is a full house. Mm. What pleases God is a full house. Okay, so continue. Uh, and said to his servants, mm -hmm. go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city yeah. and bring in hither.